What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video. So today we are talking pitch side workflow and I'm gonna try and teach you a simple workflow that anybody can use to take their photos from being click click on the back of the camera through the workflow of being edited and ready to send out or save down wherever you want them to go. Now I'm gonna try and adapt this for all different levels, okay? I'm going to include a, a top level which includes using programs like Adobe Lightroom Room, photo mechanic, maybe an FTP file transfer um, process, but I'm also going to simplify some steps along the way and maybe point out some sections where, hey, you know what, if you guys don't want to use photo mechanic, you don't have to, and here's what you could do instead. So I'm going to try and make it aimed at all different levels out there. I'm going to do some of it by sitting right here and talking it through, and I'm going to show some of you on the laptop how it works in practice. If you're looking forward to this video or you think it's a good idea, do me a favor, hit the like button. Make sure if you subscribe if you haven't already. It helps me out loads and loads on this channel and I really do appreciate it. I'm hoping that it might not be too long before we hit the 20,000 subscribers mark on this channel, which is gonna be crazy. We'll have to make sure we do a big old live stream and we'll, um, you know, we'll do a bit of celebrating uh, when that eventually happens because that will be really cool. Right, let's get into this workflow. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is we are taking photos, okay? And we're just gonna be taking our photos out there. For the sake of this example, I'm gonna use a few basketball photos that I took at a game just recently. We're gonna be taking photos. Now, if you want to work on a, I guess, more kind of pro level workflow, where you want to work quick and you want to work fast, the first thing you want to do is streamline the number of images that you're gonna be working with. The way you can do that on a lot of cameras is you can lock images in the back of the camera. You scroll through and you pick the four or maybe five images that you want and you press the lock button. If you're working with something like a 1DX, it actually has a lock button. It's the button that's a little key symbol. But if you don't, you can use buttons on lots of other cameras to lock photos too. Cameras like the 7D2, for example, or the R6, you can go into the customized settings and you can change your rate button to a lock button. So that enables you to go through your photos, press the rate button, and it is locking those images. The reason we're gonna do that is in our next step of the workflow, when we go into photo mechanic, we're going to set it so that it only imports our locked images. What that does is saves us time. It means that when we get to the laptop, we don't have a hundred images to search through. It's already got our four or five favorite images straight into the laptop, and we can just concentrate on those. If for some reason you don't have that ability with your camera, or maybe you don't want to do that, you still follow this exact same process. Just when you get into the laptop, you're going to have all your images, so you just have to quickly scoot through and pick the four or five that you want. Okay, from there, we're gonna move into the next step, which is moving those images from our camera into our laptop. Now, for the sake of this, we're gonna keep it simple. We are going to be taking the memory card out of our camera, and we are going to put it into a card reader on our laptop and import the images. There are other ways you can do this. You can run a cable direct from your camera to a laptop, depending on the camera you've got. You can do it by transferring wirelessly, but for this, we're trying to make it simple and we're keeping it so it works for everybody. So you're gonna take your memory card you're going to plug it into your memory card reader and you're going to import your images into your laptop. So for this we're going to spin around and I'm going to show you how this works on the computer. Okay, so we've just jumped around to the computer. Now I'm using my desktop computer purely because I've got like my screen recorder and stuff set up on here, but it works exactly the same on your laptop. So we're over here now. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is come into Photo Mechanic. And as I said, I'm using Photo Mechanic, but, but you might not be using Photo Mechanic and that's okay. When you plug your memory card into your card reader with Photo Mechanic, this window here is automatically gonna come up. Uh, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my, my memory card and I'm gonna import the photos. Now there's lots of different bits in here. You you can rename files, um, you can have Im like information pre-programmed um, into your stationary pad and, and all that kind of detail we'll cover on a different video. But the most important thing here we're looking to do is have this set so that it is copying locked photos only. Because by doing this, it's only going to import the photos from our memory card that we locked on the back of the camera. So let's go ahead and do that and we just click ingest right here. 
Okay, so you've got your images into your laptop. Now, if you want to caption your images, and by that I mean add some taglines to, to who's in the photo and what's going on in the photo, you can do that in Photo Mechanic as well. Now, it might be that you're in a position where you don't have Photo Mechanic or you're not interested in tagging or adding keywords in your images. That's totally fine. For you, you would just bypass this step. You're gonna import your photos into a folder on your laptop, and then from there, they're gonna go straight into Lightroom, because that's what we're gonna do in the next step. For you guys who want to quickly tag and add some keywords to your photos, I'm briefly gonna show you how that works in the computer. Gonna be a short version of it. There's a much more detailed version of that, which I probably will update in another video right here on the channel. Although if you look back on my channel, I have made videos about this before. Okay, so here we are. We have now got our four photos that we wanted to import into Photo Mechanic. Now from here, there's a few bits we can do. One of the things that we can do is go into the stationary pad. Now you'll see when you come into the stationary pad here, we've already filled in some of the information like during the BBL match between Surrey Scorchers and Manchester Giants. And there's loads of other info you could fill in in here. But for example, I could add in here, um, you know, I, I can't even see which player this is, but let's say it's Rob Sambles. Rob, um, you know, Sambles shoots a free throw and you can add your info and then move on to the next image so you can do that in this section but you might not want to do that depending on what level of this you're working at or maybe you're not using photo mechanic at all but the next thing we're going to do is move the photos from here into Lightroom. Okay, so now we're at a stage where we want to move our photos from Photo Mechanic into Lightroom. Well the easiest way to do that is just to have your library module open in Lightroom make your uh, photo mechanic window a little smaller and literally just drag and drop those images. That will automatically start to import them into Lightroom. Now, of course, if you're at a stage where you're not using photo mechanic, well, you can just import into Lightroom like you normally would. You go into import, you find the folder where you saved your photos and you bring those into Lightroom. Just gonna briefly stop at this stage here. So for you guys who didn't use Photo Mechanic, but you still want to keyword or caption your photos, you can do it right here in Lightroom. Over on the right hand side in the library module, you can see the fields where you can fill in on your photos if you want to. This takes a little longer, it's a bit more painstaking. So if you really want to get into doing captioning and stuff like that, I really would suggest Photo Mechanic, but this is an option here if you want to do it like that as well. Now we're here in Lightroom and we're going to edit our photos. So again, for making it simpler for other people, if you don't have Lightroom, you can just use whichever editing program you currently use. Maybe it's a free one, maybe you use Photoshop, and I should say this is my workflow. There's a lot of people who will use Photoshop rather than Lightroom, so you know I'm not gonna argue the pros and cons of that. I'm just showing you what I do, and right now I use Lightroom. Now the quickest way to edit these photos if you're in a rush is to start by sticking a preset on them. You can actually add the preset as you import your photos, which is what I do. I tend to either use my sports starter preset, and by the way, gonna jump in right now and say if you go to my website, robsamblesphotography.com, you can download that sports starter preset for free. And you can add that or any other preset onto your images as your photos get imported. That then means that when you go into your develop module, all you're doing here is actually just a few tweaks. You haven't got like a wholesale edit to do because you've already started with the main bits done as the photos get imported to Lightroom. Now, if I'm using any kind of uh, low light photography or shooting indoor sports, basketball, as in the case with these images, I actually will quite often use my noisy crowd preset rather than my sports starter preset. You can still get the noisy crowd on my website. You can see my sports um, pack of presets. Um, you get a whole load of presets in there if you buy that pack, but one of those is noisy crowd if you do want to check that out. So we're in Lightroom and we're going through and we're editing our photos. We're gonna make those tweaks, as I've said, and the next thing we're gonna do is export those photos. Now, if you're in Lightroom, exporting's fairly simple. You just go through, if you wanna do it the quick way, I think you press Shift, Control, E, and that takes you to the um, export window, or you just go through the menu and it takes you to export. And you're gonna export those images. Now, normally, when I'm shooting pitch side, I'm in a bit of a rush. This is where I add the sharpening. So when you scroll down the export window, you can add a certain amount of sharpening and a lot of the time in this situation rather than adding any sharpening when I'm editing the photo this is where I do it I sharpen the photos on export as they go out and I just do it on standard sharpening 
When I scroll up and down here, you can see a few of the other bits I do. I rename the files to, to whatever I want them to be. I don't really change much else. I'm not resizing the images here. Maybe if I'm sending out photos uh, that I know are only going to be used for social media, sometimes I resize them. Every now and again, I'm doing a job where I know the photos I'm sending are going straight up on Instagram. If that's the case, I'll resize them so that the short side um, is 1080p. Um, but, but it varies. Generally, I don't resize the images. But this one isn't one I can prescribe for you because it would change all the time depending on what your images are going to be used for. So we get those images exported out and they are saved into a file on our laptop. From here, you can send them out by whichever way you are gonna send out your photos. Now this one will vary loads. If I'm working for an agency, I'm sending those photos out live via an FTP server. I use FileZilla because it's free, it's very easy to use. Check that out if you want one of those systems. Um, sometimes if I'm working with uh, one of my clients, I put all the images into a smug mug gallery. There's another one I work for where they like all the photos into a Dropbox gallery. So it really depends. Whatever you've agreed with your client is what you're then going to do with those photos to transfer them over to those people. And that's kind of your final step of your workflow, right? I recommend having a subfolder within your folder. I do that and I just call it sent. So once I've transferred those photos, I move them to the sent folder. Just for in my own head, it's really easy when I'm busy and it's pitch side. I know what I've sent and I know what I haven't sent yet. So I really recommend doing that as an extra little step. I hope that all makes sense. I know we've kind of gone through this fairly quick and kind of talked through the stages. And uh, in, in real life time, you can do this entire process very, very quick. When I'm in a rush and I've got like a gold celebration or something I want to send out real quick, I will go through that entire workflow probably beginning to end in two minutes, like maximum. So you really can work quick when you need to. If you've got any more questions about the workflow, add them into the comments below. My plan is to add some follow-up videos where I do a bit more detail around photo mechanic, um, a bit more detail around the editing process that I use in Lightroom. But any other questions you've got, let me know in the comments below and maybe there'll be a series or a few add-on videos like this. I hope this one's helped you. If it did, do me a favor, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. In the meantime, guys, thank you very much for watching. I will see you on the next video.